Yeah. yeah. What's up? Got a new gun coming for you. That's funky. I wasn't expecting one, but what do we have? Let's see what we got today. Hello, hello. Now, I remember promising that I'd get part two of the Dinosaur King video out, and then after that would be the Argentinosaurus video, followed up by the King Brown and Coastal Taipan videos. However, I quickly wanted to make this video before I forget or am no longer interested. In this video, I'll be going over a video from the YouTube channel Wild Sciencius and his video of six dinosaurs that could defeat Tyrannosaurus Rex. This channel specializes in these sorts of videos where he talks about fight comparisons between different animals. I've watched some and I found them to be decent like his lion vs tiger video alongside some others such as polar bear vs kodiak bear. However, there are obviously some dumb comparisons here and there like orangutan vs gorilla or asian water monitor vs komodo dragon which is like asking who would win in a fight me with a baseball bat or some poor old lady's kneecaps. Anyway, I thought that since he's a 420,000 subscriber channel, there's obviously some people who trust him and what he says, which brings up the question of how accurate are his videos. So since I've been researching prehistoric animals recently, I thought it'd be best to go over his six animals that can beat Tyrannosaurus video and see what he gets wrong. I imagine this being fairly easy to pick apart, since most of these types of channels seem to focus on production quality rather than the topic at hand, but we'll see. Six dinosaurs that could defeat a T-Rex. Any of the predatory dinosaurs known as Tyrannosaurs lived from the late Jurassic period, about 150 million years ago, to the end of the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years ago when they reached their high point of dominance. The animal would have stood more than 21 feet, 6.5 meters tall, if it had stood upright, but the normal posture was horizontal, with the body parallel to the ground and the tail held off the ground as a counterbalance. A large adult weighing 9,000 to 15,000 pounds, 4,000 to 7,000 kilograms, could stand 46 feet, 14 meters tall in this position. Okay, so the first problem is this one, where he states that Tyrannosaurs went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous 65 million years ago. However, the Cretaceous actually ended closer to 66 million years ago. I know this is getting very specific, but it's something to keep in mind. The next mistake we run into is this bit where he states Tyrannosaurus weighed 4 to 7 metric tons. Tyrannosaurus could actually get bigger than this, with Sue, the most complete specimen, believed to be about 9.1 metric tons. And I've heard people say online that the largest specimen, Scotty, is estimated to be somewhere between 10 and 11 metric tons. And he also says that Tyrannosaurus, if it stood upright, could be 6.5 meters tall or 21 feet but on its actual stance it could be 14 meters tall or about 46 feet. One, it was closer to 12 or 13 feet tall or about 14 meters. Two, I think he's confusing length with height which I've seen tons of people do. And the length was also closer to about 40 to 43 feet or 12 to 13 meters. Now onto the candidates. Number six, Triceratops. In a fight, a Triceratops can defeat a T-Rex. The T-Rex is taller, longer and more deadly with its killing instincts, but it is helpless if knocked over. Perhaps no other creature is better suited to bowling over and killing a T-Rex than the Triceratops. If these two creatures were to fight on an open plain, the fight would start with a charge toward each other because that is all the Triceratops knows how to do. Because the Triceratops is heavier and faster, it clashes with the T-Rex with much greater force. When compared to the bipedal, unwieldy T-Rex, the Triceratops is quadrupedal and much more balanced on the ground. So his first contender for T-Rex killers is Triceratops, and he says that if the fight took place on an open plane, it'd start with them charging at each other, because that's the only thing Triceratops knows how to do in this situation. Shut the f up. 
According to research I've done for my Dinosaur King video, Triceratops most likely wouldn't do this, with it being believed that if two Triceratopses rammed heads, they'd crush their skulls. So Triceratops would probably be hesitant to do this with Tyrannosaurus as well. So it most likely would have just stood its ground if it were to fight. Triceratops from what I know is believed to have been similar in speed to a black rhinoceros. However, it was actually similar in size to T-Rex, not bigger. Also, with this bit, what the f*** do you think Tyrannosaurus is meant to do? Of course Tyrannosaurus would approach from a different direction. It wouldn't kamikaze into Triceratops' horns like a Japanese fighter pilot that ran out of ammunition. Overall, with this pick, I'd say I agree with him. Triceratops actually lived with Tyrannosaurus, and there is fossil evidence of these two fighting with one another. If I remember correctly, there was a fossil found of both a Triceratops and a Tyrannosaurus locked in combat, which has been nicknamed the Dueling Dinos, not to be confused with the famous Fighting Dinos, which is a Velociraptor and Protoceratops locked in combat found in Mongolia, not Montana, USA. Anyway, my point is that it was possible that Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus killed each other, meaning that Triceratops could in fact win against the Tyrannosaurus. So I do agree with him here, however I do not agree with the next dinosaur he chooses, which is Spinosaurus. Number 5. Spinosaurus Spinosaurus was a massive and extremely powerful predator, possibly the world's longest theropod dinosaur. But Spinosaurus was highly specialized for the killing of fish, so that depends on where the fight occurs. The T-Rex would undoubtedly win on land, while the Spinosaurus would certainly win in the water. Spinosaurus was a fish eater. Catching fish requires a considerable amount of agility and quickness, and it was certainly well armed. T-Rex, on the other hand, was well adapted for land maneuvering and overpowering. So he makes the argument that it depends on where the fight occurs, with Spinosaurus winning in the water and Spinosaurus winning out on land. Yes, it is true Spinosaurus was specialized for hunting fish. However, recently there was a paper published by paleontologist Paul Serino simply titled Spinosaurus was not an aquatic dinosaur. In this paper, Serino and his colleagues argue Spinosaurus wouldn't be capable of actively hunting fish underwater and wasn't as great at swimming as we think of it as being. Admittedly, I haven't read the paper myself, but from what I've seen from watching Raptor Chatter's video about it, it seems somewhat plausible, though I will admit I have some doubts about the paper. Anyway, Wild Scientius says in his video that hunting fish requires you to be agile and fast, therefore in the water, Spinosaurus would win. However, the paper found that Spinosaurus could at most reach a speed of 1.2 meters a second, or 4.32 kilometers an hour. In other words, a fight in the water would be more equal than people think of it as being for Tyrannosaurus. In terms of stuff he got right, I do like of how he says Spinosaurus was possibly the longest carnivore, not the largest. There is a difference. Longest is just talking about length, but largest is talking about mass. Spinosaurus is believed to have reached about 14 to 16 meters, or about 46 to 52 feet, and is estimated to be about 7 metric tons. Tyrannosaurus, on the other hand, is about 40 to 43 feet long, or 12 to 13 meters, and weighed well over 9 metric tons. In a video posted to YouTube as a bonus sort of thing for Prehistoric Planet, simply titled Prehistoric Planet Uncovered, David Ambrose says that Tyrannosaurus could even get to around 10 metric tons. That's nearly 50% larger than Spinosaurus. Anyway, I don't really think I need to continue on with this section. Spinosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus is a very unfair matchup, which only started because of Jurassic Park 3. We did not start it! Yes you did, you invaded Poland! The reality is that Spinosaurus wouldn't win, even if it's in the water. All Tyrannosaurus would need to do is charge in and grab Spinosaurus by the head, completely crushing the skull using its 12,800 psi bite force. Number 4. Giganotosaurus The fight between a Giganotosaurus and a Tyrannosaurus Rex would be a brutal affair, but it would come down to several factors that give one creature the edge over the other. 
The Giganotosaurus had a lean, pointed tail, which probably contributed to its agility and ability to make quick, sharp turns. Both dinosaurs have a similar design, but they are not closely related. <laughs> Even though the Tyrannosaurus Rex is tougher and has a better chance of winning 65% of the time, the Giganotosaurus has a chance and should not be underestimated. Being a comparable size, Giganotosaurus would definitely win the fight sometimes. Okay, now this is getting stupid. Yes, I know these fights aren't always going to be the same animal winning 100% of the time. As an example, I think of a tiger as being the superior animal in a matchup with a lion, but there have been cases of tigers being killed by lions. So for me, I'm more so talking who I think would win more often than not. If Tyrannosaurus Rex wins like two thirds of the time, then one, how did you calculate that percentage? And two, then this means that literally any animal could beat Tyrannosaurus. A polar bear could beat Tyrannosaurus as long as he have the two animals face off enough times. The polar bear is bound to kill Tyrannosaurus at some point, and this can also apply to every other animal, ranging from blue whales to your neighbor's cat. Going by the logic he's using here for Giganontosaurus, any animal can win against T-Rex. Honestly, the only reason I reckon he threw Giganontosaurus and Spinosaurus in here is because he probably realised that if he didn't, he'd get tons of people saying, but what about Spino and Giga? Giganontosaurus should not be on this list. He literally did a video before this one dedicated to this subject and he himself concluded that Tyrannosaurus is the winner in this fight. I am Nemesis Prime! You are nothing! The reality is, is that with Giganontosaurus, it's completely garbage when compared to Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus was larger, more agile, smarter, had better binocular vision, and a bite force more than three times as powerful. The only factors I can think of that give Giganontosaurus an advantage is that it was designed to make its prey bleed out instead of just crushing bone, and that Giganontosaurus was also faster. However, speed doesn't equal agility, so unless Giganontosaurus was trying to retreat or ambush T-Rex, speed wouldn't help. And the final thing I'll say about this section is that I doubt this image he shows is actually of a Giganontosaurus since there's what appears to be a triceratops in the background, and this thing has two fingers on each hand. This just goes to show the effort put into this video. Number 3. Carcharodontosaurus Carcharodontosaurus is also considered one of the largest land predators of all time, measuring approximately 45 feet, 13 meters in length. It was the dominant predator during its time on Earth. It had larger forearms than T-Rex and was a formidable opponent. Both dinosaurs would put up a good fight, but Carcharodontosaurus would likely win due to its larger size and stronger arms than the T-Rex. In addition, the Carcharodontosaurus had sharper teeth, a longer jaw, and superior speed and agility. Also, because weight is an important factor, Carcharodontosaurus, being heavier, would have somewhat equaled the T-Rex's better defined musculature. Did you forget who I am? I am Optimus Prime. This bit about Carcharodontosaurus can just be lumped in with Giga and Spino. Carcharodontosaurus wasn't heavier. Weight estimates for Carcharodontosaurus hover from as little as 5 to as much as 15 metric tons, whilst Tyrannosaurus is 6 to 14 metric tons, meaning that when going off of all estimates for both animals, they're about similar in size. However, according to this artwork I found, modern estimates put Carcharodontosaurus at about 6.2 metric tons, and as I stated earlier, Sue, the Tyrannosaurus, is believed to be about 9.1 metric tons. The largest weight estimates, or more modern estimates for Carcharodontosaurus I've seen, that are the largest, was 6.9. Alongside this, the part about Carcharodontosaurus having larger and more muscular arms than Tyrannosaurus also applies to Giganontosaurus and Spinosaurus, so it doesn't make sense to only mention it for Carcharodontosaurus. 
Gigantosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus are close relatives, both being in the same family, Carcharodontosauridae. So having larger arms, being faster, and having sharper teeth than Tyrannosaurus are things that apply to both of them. The difference being that Gigantosaurus is larger than Carcharodontosaurus by about 700 kilograms, according to the artwork I just referenced. Number two, Argentinosaurus. Because it is much larger, the Argentinosaurus will undoubtedly win. A fully grown adult Argentinosaurus is no match for a T-Rex. Because the sauropod weighed 70 to 80 tons, it could easily rear up on its hind legs and crush a T-Rex underfoot. The Rex's bones would shatter and its guts would spill out. Another issue is that the T-Rex would have difficulty reaching for the Argentinosaurus's neck because its posture is similar to that of a giraffe, allowing it to hold its head high. A T-Rex would also be vulnerable to the long neck's massive tail, which would have no trouble brutally wounding the mighty theropod. Okay, now the argument he puts forth for Argentinosaurus I absolutely agree with. The throat's far out of reach, it could easily just crush Tyrannosaurus under its foot, and the tail would probably be a formidable weapon also. And the weight he lists off of 70 to 80 metric tons is accurate to my knowledge. Number 1. Ankylosaurus Ankylosaurus has many advantages over its hunter. This offers sufficient protection against the Tyrannosaurus's bite. The Ankylosaurus also has a more offensive weapon in the form of its tail club. With the beast's superior turning speed, this club has the potential to shatter bone. One strike would put a Tyrannosaur out of hunting for a very long while and could possibly kill it. As you can see, the Ankylosaurus was not too small to deal with the Tyrannosaur. Being low to the ground provided the creature with a few advantages. To begin with, the Tyrannosaurus would have to bend over to land a bite, giving the Ankylosaurus time to strike with its tail. Second, the Tyrannosaurus would struggle to bend low enough to target a leg. As a result, the Ankylosaurus appears to be well equipped to deal with its predator. If we look at a fight to the death situation, things will play out in the Ankylosaurus's favor, with the only difference being that the armored beast will bash the Tyrannosaurus with its club to kill it, even after it has knocked it down. Yes! And the final animal, Ankylosaurus, I also agree with. That club could shatter bone, and the armor would also protect it from Tyrannosaurus. However, the only parts I dislike is when he says its club is more of an offensive weapon. No, the thing was meant for defensive use. And I also dislike how he says that in a fight to the death, Ankylosaurus would still club Tyrannosaurus when it knocks the predator to the ground. In reality, it would most likely hit Tyrannosaurus in the leg, breaking the leg, and while Tyrannosaurus is sat there squealing in pain, unable to get up, Ankylosaurus would just wander off in search of plant matter to eat. Overall, I agree with three of the dinosaurs he listed off, and disagreed with the other three, so when going off of that, it's a 50-50 split between good and bad. However, going off of research I've done for previous videos, most of this video is completely inaccurate. Even if I do agree with some parts, there's still a lot wrong. I mean, this bit here, when he's talking about Triceratops, did he just Google Ceratopsian dinosaurs and just picked the images at random? That looks like a mutant Styracosaurus, not a Triceratops. Anyway, now for my own list of dinosaurs that can beat T-Rex. Literally any sauropod dinosaur larger than 40 metric tons. Honourable mentions are Grimlock, Mr. Conductor, and the average hillbilly redneck armed with a bottle of Jack Daniels and an AR-15 with a 30 round magazine. Oh, and also Barney. Anyway, that's this video over with. Next should be either the Argentinosaurus video or Dinosaur King Part 2, though it will most likely be the latter since that's got a partial script done, whilst I haven't done anything on Argentinosaurus yet. If you feel like there's any other videos like these you'd like me to go over, do let me know, 
since there's plenty of these out there. Stay down. Final warning. I could do this all day. <laughs> 